Where does that go exactly? Well, we have a contingency plan, but uh, you know, not going to strategically uh, share that, Michael. <laughs> You try to be. You try to have a plan so you're not unprepared. How does Isaiah's injury really affect what you guys are able to do defensively and also who really slides into that role? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. Obviously, Isaiah, um, I, yeah, I can't say enough good things about him as a pro, as a teammate. Uh, really enjoyed, you know, one of the guys when I got here. Uh, he's been a really bought in. He was having a good year. It's unfortunate. Uh, that's the uh, kind of the crappy part about this, this game. And uh, we all know the risk, but it's still really unfortunate. And so, um, yeah, so he won't be, be around the rest of the season. Now those guys got to step up. There's a lot of ways to attack it. Uh, not necessarily every time you got to go one for one when you have injuries, when you've had to deal with them in the past, which every team does. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. We, we can have multiple guys step up there, play different roles. Uh, you may end up naturally evolving into something else, and it could be a really good thing for you. That's happened to, to me in the past, certain positions. When you've had injuries at tight ends, guys roll and grow, and then you find out they actually can do more, and you may kind of evolve into something else. So we, we feel good about uh, the guys we got here. And um, like I said, they're going to kick that ball off at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, breakfast at Tottenham, and uh, we'll be ready to roll. You know, Avery's done a good job. He's a guy that's gotten here. He's a good football player. Um, certainly, like all of us, you know, there's play calls I want back. There's certain plays I'm sure he wants back. But he's a rookie. He's uh, very, uh, very smart. He's got a lot of football instincts. And uh, he stepped up. You know, he stepped up at the end of the Giants game when, when Zay had the cramps. And then he obviously stepped up last week. And like I said, there's room for improvement for all of us. But uh, we got confidence in him or wherever, whatever way, other direction we decide to go. Sure, all options on the table, D. Led. Uh, every option is on the table, and we'll, we'll, you know we we feel pretty good about the plan. And uh, obviously, we got to go out there and implement it, and see what it looks like in practice. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have a vision. You know, when you uh, the thing I think you got to come into these jobs with. Um, it, you, like I said, you've got to be objective. You're going to get a lot of information from a lot of people, maybe not intentionally, but there's a lot of different motives when people, and you've got to filter it all down, and then you've got to make your own judgment. And you really don't know until you actually get to work with somebody. And you know, I always say this about coaches and players. You may know people, uh, friends in the business, or you know, you've heard things about players, but until you go through a season, you don't really know about somebody because that's when you really find out about people, players, and coaches. Uh, but Zay, he's one of those guys. You find out who he is, and he, he's an ultimate pro. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, like I said, we still got some time with those guys. Uh, both those guys will practice all week. Both those guys will travel with us. Uh, you know, we can make a decision, you know, at any time. But, uh, yeah, that, those options are on the table. Is, is that the guy that you could envision playing inside, or is that more of an outside? It just depends. You know, he's, he's played it before, a uh, different scheme. Um, you know, obviously with Kendall, yeah, he'll, he'll go out there and, and practice and hopefully uh, find a role for us. Yeah, I, you know, both teams, I think what you're seeing uh, standard now, most teams usually have been flying over through the night on Thursday. Both teams are going to do it here in this uh, instance, uh, us and the Jets. Um, you know, in the past, some people have treated it like a bowl week. They've gone over maybe Sunday night from the previous game or Monday, and they've been there all week. Uh, you know, there's pretty good science behind it. Uh, that's why most teams, I think, have done this overnight, you get there Friday, uh, you know, like I was telling Bassity. You know, half these games have been 14 plus, you know, point differential. So I think there's been 28 games, 13 of them have been decided by 14 or more for various reasons. You can't put, say, hey, one. But the end of the day is both teams are handled the same, handled or handed the same circumstances. We got to adapt. We're excited about going over there. I think it's a hell of an opportunity when you can showcase the, the, the NFL and the game in a market like this. I'm excited as hell. The team's excited. It's a challenge. It's a it's a big game for us. Uh, you know, we need to go over there and, and play well and win. Did you speak to Brian from anybody from Team Serving or two different? Sure. Yeah, he talked to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I was a part of the staff that we did this. 
We played at Wembley, but we played the Chargers over there in 18. Uh, used a pretty similar schedule. Uh, you know, you talk to people. Obviously, Jacksonville has been over there more than anybody. You know, people that I know that have been on those staffs, you reach out to them. Um, no different than the, the Jets. I mean, they got people that were in Jacksonville too. So, And you talk around. You talk to people in other industries and try to make the best decision for your team. Well, you know, it's not necessarily a fixed number. Right. Uh, it's over time. That's why, um, you know, you can get frustrated by things. Uh, we're one and three. And, you know, I just look at it, we haven't turned a profit yet. And there's a lot of ways to look at it. And, and we feel like that profit's going to turn. But the, right now, we haven't turned a profit. So we are what we are. We're one and three. And there's, there's several reasons. And, you know, we deserve to be. because But there is progress being made. So I look at it like a business. Like, we're going to turn a profit. And you have to do it hopefully sooner than faster. But like when you get over the run game, same analogy. Obviously, you get down to Tampa, the game kind of evolves. We didn't get a lot of carries there. But I feel like the run game's coming. Uh, we don't have to have a set number of carries. Like I said, we want to be balanced. We don't want to be obvious. There's strides. Sometimes there's some painful um, short-term frustrations that will eventually pay over long-term gains. And that's certainly, you can see that in the run game, some of your protection schemes. Um, so week over week, we just got to make sure we're trending in the right direction. So that's kind of how I look at it, but it kind of all goes into play there. It's a good question. Anthony? Uh, Cole, from the Mountains of the Fremont Hospital, how excited are you um, to have him on and what is your expectation? Yeah, well, he's obviously a uh, seasoned veteran. He's my age. Um, <laughs> he is. Uh, Got a lot of mutual friends, and he went to Tennessee. Knew a lot of the same same people. Obviously, me being from Memphis, um, he's punted well for a long time in the league. So we expect him to go out there and execute. And we got a lot of faith in him. Certainly helps when you got veterans. Uh, you know, he knows what to expect. He knows how to prepare to go out there and, and operate. So we're excited. We'll see what he can do. When you see your rookie quarterback that was for the Jets, what stands out to see you just from watching the film? Yeah, he's got incredible arm strength. Um, you go back, you look at the Titans game. When he got outside the pocket, he made him pay. Uh, he's deadly accurate uh, off schedule. So we know it's going to be a tremendous challenge. Um, and that's an area we got to improve. Uh, you know, like I said, like, all these guys, man, it's, the NFL is a tough transition. That's why, you know, these hot takes, same thing you're dealing with with somebody like Kyle. There is growth. He's getting, you know, it's, but you can't make these snap judgments. And I think a lot of times in society, and it's great for the game. There's so much hype and everything's in our face 24-7, whatever social media, whatever it is, it can, almost the hype can be overwhelming. And the truth is, let's see how this thing plays out at the end of the year. We've seen guys have massive rookie years, and then they fall off a cliff. We've seen guys have bad rookie years, and they go on to Hall of Fame careers. That's why I look at these quarterbacks. Like, I don't get caught up in whatever narrative is after four weeks. I mean, you go back and look at somebody like Peyton Manning. I believe he, you know, had the, the all-time interception as a rookie. And look what, you know, he arguably – the best ever to do it. So uh, I, I, it's harder now to have perspective and you know, everything's so instant gratification. So and I guess on the bigger picture, a lot of these rookies, people want to hammer on things. There's some talented players. So at that position, the quarterback is really hard to play. And you see it. I mean, you see his talent. And we've got to be ready to go because he, he can expose us. Um, when, you, when you look at a player like Wilson, of course, just in your um, – just as your time in coaching, what do you think is most successful um, containing and stopping a rookie quarterback? They're all different. You know, it's a good question. I, I'm not, you know, I don't want to get into, uh, you know, not state secrets or whatever, but I'm not going to get into, hey, schematically what it is. Uh, they all present different challenges. They're not all the same. I think that's what makes it laughable to me. I'll go back to bigger picture. I think this where the stereotypes are really dumb. Uh, the guy where he played for. You know, it, it, you can almost write some of these narratives themselves before they ever play a snap. It's like, hey, a guy hits this 40 number, he looks this way, he's going to be this type of player. It, it's laughable. They're all different. They all have different talents. Um, and, and Zach Wilson, he's going to provide a, a big-time challenge for us. He's a really good player. Anyone? I'm not sure if you can answer this or not. Did you have to get passports for any of your players when you said, as you did, just hopping on a flight and going to New York or something like that? Yeah.
Yeah, there is a lot of logistical. It's a good question. There's a lot of uh, planning that goes into it. Uh, you got to make sure the pass. But we plan this. It was, you know, the NFL does a good job with our operations team. Brandon Ruth, those guys, they do a hell of a job. And and Sarah and Griff, and then you, we plan this out. I mean, I, I was told pretty early when I took this job that we're going to go over there. You have plans. You have contingency plans in case we're not playing. Uh, and they told us about a month ago that it's a go. But but from the summer, even the spring, we talked about getting your passports in. And and when, uh, you got to be, yeah, and it's, it's big, right? You sign a guy this week, you got to make sure they got their passport. Um, so that, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Sure. That's why we got out ahead of it. We're, you're not looking. I know a lot of times, you know, people think that you're getting in these jobs and there's a lot of glitz and glamour. You're going to skip the line. We didn't skip the line anywhere. I told them a long time ago, get your passports. And uh, yeah, I think more people now have them. I think this is probably a bigger deal. It seems to me as more people have their passports now. Uh, it's more common than probably it was. I'm sure it was a bigger challenge 15 years ago in terms of just being on people about getting them. Coach, do you feel like your offensive line took a step back this week? In what way? Just from a protection standpoint. You know, okay, Here, here's how I'll say that. Uh, I think they made progress every week. I wouldn't call it a step back. I don't know what numbers you're referring to. I'm not just, just based off of just looking at looking at the guys and as far as being able to deal with stunts and different things like that. Um, I think there's improvement week to week. I think we're close in the run game. And the only reason I ask, I don't know, you know, sometimes you get these questions and they're all every question's fair, but I, I just, to answer it simply, no, no. I mean, that, we've been playing some pretty good fronts. I think Washington, they had one sack. We had a miscommunication. But me, optimistically, don't think it should have happened. It's a pretty damn good front. They blocked, so we hopefully build a conference. We got an even bigger challenge because these guys are freaking humming up front. They had seven sacks last week. Uh, they play freaking hard. So we, we got to work cut out of the front, but no, no, we're making progress. I mean, I think you could, you know, even being optimistic or trying to, uh, nobody's trying to cook the books here. And, you know, I'm not trying to send out a, a shareholder letter, and, you know, to pump our stock up with some Wall Street analysts. So I think you just look week over week. Obviously, in week one, it wasn't uh, good enough. Week two, I thought it was a little bit better. Week three, same thing. There's always going to be things we got to correct, uh, but we got a challenge. It's a life in the NFL. Good player. He's been disruptive. Uh, like I said, those guys move. They don't give up on the rush. Uh, they got an initial burst up the field. They got good counter moves, and they got they run games as well as anybody in the league. And a lot of you know a lot of his production too. That's why it's a coordinated rush. You know, uh, you know a lot of like. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because you have people with different takes on sacks. You can have some high-volume sack teams that are bad teams. You know, they don't win a lot of games, and, you know, they have a lot of high-number sacks. You can have some rush groups that can make life hell that may not have a lot of sack numbers. Um, this group is about as good as coordinated as it is. So you look at somebody like him, a lot of his production comes because he's really talented. He's a really good player. But they got some uh, selfless guys up there that are getting guys open, too. These pick games they run are, are damn good. They don't give up on the rush. So a lot of times if they get you off your first read and the quarterback's holding it, he's coming around the edge. It's all those guys. I mean, so uh, like I said, it's as good as a coordinated rush as, as I've, I've seen so far. When you look at the schedule for Friday and Saturday, could you share a little bit of that? And are they able to kind of go look around London City and like that? Or is that just all kind of shut down because it's a good It's not shut down. It's like, it's like here. Um, you know, we get over there. We, we've got a schedule that we, you know, we believe in. Uh, you know how to how to do this and travel. Obviously, we'll see what the results are at the end of the weekend. But uh, you know where we're staying. I mean, there's not. I mean, it's they got a really nice setup for us. But it's no different than here. You know, I think the UK is in a very similar spot as the United States. Um, you know, obviously, I haven't been over there in a couple of years, but I don't think it's going to be. It's not going to look like 2020. I guess it's probably the best way to put it. Is there anything that you look forward to the London part of this? Yeah, doing? I do. I think it's exciting. I think the fact that we can go play an NFL game over there, and you're going to have a full crowd and people are excited about football, it helps grow the game. And I think that's healthy for the game. It's healthy for the NFL. Healthy for football on all levels. Our football. And one more question for me: um, Having Wayne Gallman activated last week for the first time all season, what was kind of the decision there, and what did you see from him to maybe yeah. do that again? 
A lot of those are, you know, when you're going week to week, you've seen we have, it's not been consistent. You know, we have different matchups, different plans, and a lot of it comes down to special teams. We meet a lot of those guys, uh, you know, in order to get a helmet on game day, they got to have a role. Uh, you've obviously seen us use Felipe in different, different roles. Wayne, we felt he's, he, since he's gotten here, he's gotten better. He's got a role. I saw a couple things I liked in the run game, and we got to make a decision at the end of the week, but he's progressing. Yeah. I don't know how business savvy I am, but uh, you know that's a great question for Rich McKay. Maybe you can get Bassett to get him to come out here and talk, um, or hit uh, Goodell up, or no. But they, the NFL does a really fantastic job with this. It's exciting. Uh, maybe in my mindset, I, I, you know, I, I I like it. You know, I, I just think it's 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 really cool when you think about it. Think about it that we can go over there and there's excitement and it grows the game. I, you know, as a franchise. Again, I, I got my own thoughts, but I'm just speculating, so I'm not going to get out here and say it. Um, I think it's, it's exciting. I think it's cool. And who knows what the future holds? Since you were talking about it being similar over here, so do you put restrictions on your guys over there because of different things? Right? The way I look at it, it's the same way when we got to the vaccinations. You know, um, you, people got to educate themselves. We, we have ways we travel. Like, I think everything has a curfew. Um, you know, we educate our guys everything that we try to and they got to make decisions i mean you're talking about adults here this isn't college football where and i just don't believe in that you know you i believe in freedom of choice now we were smart about stuff and we're not asking guys to do anything they wouldn't do at home i think uh, we've got a responsible group um i think that's why you know like i said i mean these guys there's no mandate to get vaccinated these guys had to make the best interest, uh, best decision for themselves and what they thought would help them and their family. And that's all we ever do. We don't put guilt trips on guys. We have a schedule. Our guys have been great about it. We had no issues down in Miami. I don't expect any issues when we go to London. And uh, Eric Harris, Gabe, Davidson, do you expect any of them back this week? Or? Um, you know, those guys, where we'll evaluate them, uh, again, we'll have to see. I, mean, I don't know how much they'll really practice today. Obviously, we got to make a decision before we get on the plane. If, if we're going to leave anybody back, if it's, it's the best interest for their rehab, or we think they got a chance to play, we'll, we'll bring them with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, Corey Davis, somebody you know yeah. very well. How is he playing for the Jets? And I have a follow up. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, again, guys, I'm, I'll answer every question. You had your hand up there for you had your hand up there for a while, dude. <laughs> uh, I don't ever claim to have a whole right answer, but I promise you, I won't short you guys on on the question. <laughs> So, Corey, uh, yeah, no, Corey's a really good player. Uh, he's fearless going inside the numbers. Uh, one of the tougher, tougher players I've coached. Uh, I'm happy for CD. You know, he, he, uh, he got rewarded with a, with a nice contract, and, and I see a, a very physical player. Like I said, he's fearless with the football. He, he's, he's physical in the run game, and he's making some big plays for him. He made a big, big play for him last week on a play extension. Um, Happy Zell for Corey Davis. Obviously, we got to we got to we got to stop him on Sunday. No different than I saw Adam Humphreys last week. Really like Adam, uh, you know. But when we come come down to game time, if you're you know, if I was playing against my family, I'm trying to we're trying to whip uh, like beat the crap out of him. So, uh, but uh, I got nothing respect for Corey Davis. Yeah, and uh, defensively, Quinnen up front, and, and I guess CJ they got him back after he opted last year. Uh, how are they playing in, in, in unison and another guy, other guy? Yeah, so CJ, really, uh, really smart football player. Obviously, Dean coached him in Baltimore, mm -hmm. gone against him a few times. Very, very smart player. Um, so from what I've seen on tape, he looks as good as he's ever looked. And he's making plays and looks like he's running the show over there. And he's a really good football player, and we got to account for him. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to, to look at it. Uh, you know, that's the biggest challenge, and that's the thing you like, you got to love about pro football. And like I said, sometimes it's, you can't let something linger. Uh, whether you win a game, say, you know, we won it. Say we hit the Hail Mary, right? And, uh, you can't let that euphoria and think all of a sudden you've got all your problems solved and have the hangover and, and, and get crushed over in London, and then you go into bye week two and three that way. Um, 
you've got to get over wins and losses quick in this league. Or they were playing in London. They sent us to the Maldives. You know, that's our job we signed up for. Let's go play a game. We've got to get prepared to go play it. And it is the hardest thing to do oh, week after week after week. That's why the challenge of pro football is unlike any other thing because the games, they're not 82 games. There are 17 of them now. The season takes on four or five lives of its own as it evolves, You're dealing with injuries. You have a couple tough losses. Can you get better? Can you keep perspective? Like I said, you can be frustrated, but you better get over it. And if you're seeing things that are signs of progress, you can be encouraged, but you've got to keep pushing and improving. And so, yeah, it's not where we want to be. Like I said, we haven't turned a profit, um, but it's a you know every week's big, and we got to get ready to go. Certainly, yeah, it does. Whether you win or lose, going into the bye, it feels like it lingers because you got two weeks you're suing on. But if even if we win, we got to be able to turn the page the next week, accomplish what we need to on the bye, and then get ready for my you know Miami. It'll be the same challenge. But uh, it's a good question. But win or lose, don't let it don't let there be a hangover. They're all different. Um, you know, sometimes players, you know, they can take a – you may think you have a great scheme. It goes off schedule. And, you know, the end result's really good. But you can look back at it, and that's where you got to be a Jets. because you scored on the play. It doesn't mean it was some great scheme or some great play call. I think a lot of times in uh, a game of football that's so complex, there's a lot of variables. Then if you can shrink it down and just be brilliant in the basics of what you're trying to do, it sounds so boring, but sometimes the mundane over and over and over again, it pays off. And, and a lot of those repetitions and things we're asking guys to do, some of the route craft, the timing, you know, with some as little as, as some of our the action fakes, where we set up. Um, you know, I, I think you, as I said, I, I, we feel like we're making progress week over week. But again, we got to turn a profit. And what you can't have, you know, all of a sudden you, you feel like you're making a progress, but you're not turning a profit. And then it goes the other way. So uh, Matt's as good as anybody. His work habits, study habits, and yeah, he works on his craft. But I, I kind of call it we got to be br brilliant in the basics. And a lot of times that's not a flashy word. It's not doesn't get a headline. Uh, it's not fun to write about, but that's kind of what it comes down to. Charles? I don't know if this is too early or if this will be known before his surgery, but have you been given a timetable from Oliver for a training camp? That's hard to speculate. You know, I just hope, you know, Zay, um, if anybody's going to attack it, he'll attack it as well as anybody. Uh, you know, that's probably a better question for him and, the, and our medical staff. Uh, you know, you never know what the future holds. I, I don't get in predictions and injuries because I've just seen it. Obviously, Adrian Peterson was one of the freaks that, you know, he kind of almost like ruined it for everybody else, but but he's, he's an outlier. Um, they're all different, like I said, and it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. That's why I, I don't ever give timetable on injuries because it sets up bad, you know, narratives, and that's not fair to the player. Dave, in the back. Are you a sleep on the plane kind of guy? Like, how will you make use of your time on the plane? I'll try to get some sleep. Um, I, I, like I said, I probably drink way too much coffee, um, so I need to sleep, you know, because we're going to get over there, and it'll be about 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'll certainly try on normal domestic flights. I really don't. Like, growing up, I've never seen. I've never been able to sleep in the car on an airplane. So. And then that's the league decision. With it being a shorter league, you don't have that time for time adjustment once you get over there. You know, so how do you, what's kind of the best way to get over there, get settled, make use of the time, and get ready to play football? Yeah, it's you're, you're juggling a couple of things. I mean, we have a schedule we believe in. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but. Um, you know, that's a challenge. I mean, we got a, we got a whole work week ahead of us. We're still playing on Sunday. Yes, there is a little bit of a, obviously, stating the obvious, there is a difference. We're getting on a, a plane and flying internationally across the pond. So, you know, everybody, both teams are dealing with the same set of circumstances. Um, you know, there's things we'll do Friday to try to make sure we adjust that we feel pretty confident in. And uh, you hope by the time we, you know, you, you wake up Sunday, you feel pretty well adjusted. I look a lot older, though. Well, I'm wondering with your new beard now, are you, are you shocked by this uh, gray? You're not, uh, you don't have quite the same look as uh, David Baskin over there. Are you insinuating that he's 
using certain products. Um, so those are shots fired towards Bassity. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's a bad look or a good look. Sometimes I really don't care. I, I've got a big enough family, like I said, that somebody's going to, is going to make fun of me, and then somebody's going to say, hey, it looks good. I, you don't know what the truth is. Uh, maybe I'll shave. Maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I'll go for the uh, urine clop look when I get over there. Um, so, but, yeah, I might, you know, sometimes I get reminded that there sure is a lot of beer, uh, gray going in your beard, and there's a lot of gray in my hair, too, so I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the truth is. Did you ever get the answer your three years? Or? Yeah, I mean, again, because Bassie's uh, uh, – Kind of a jack a said you know he set us up here I, again i don't know if he was trying to mess with you or me or both um you know i'm a huge fan of the show but that has nothing to do with us i, I don't i don't view us as the same spot as asc richmond that's why i always laugh is that's why you uh, don't pay attention to the noise i mean something as harmless as a joke like that that's what i tell people all the time like get off get off line sometimes and don't go down toxic rabbit holes Somebody's going to think you're an a-hole. Somebody's going to think you're, you're smart. Somebody's going to think you're the dumbest person in the world. Somebody's going to think you're, you know, this or that. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, I don't like to work with people who don't have a sense of humor, personally. Uh, players or coaches, and if you can't take criticism or you, you can't laugh at yourself, I really don't want to work with you. So uh, I thought it was a pretty funny move by Bassity, but I'm not going to lean into it. I'm not going to get off the plane with a mustache and a, a visor and an AFC Richmond tracksuit. So. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you all.